Estonia's Reform Party, led by Prime Minister Kaya Kalas, has emerged victorious in elections held on Sunday. The result is not only significant for Europe, but for Ukraine as well, as the current regime is one of the most staunch pro-Kiev governments in the entirety of Europe. The centre-right Reform Party won the general elections by a huge margin. The results were announced on Sunday and it secured nearly 32% of ballot votes in 101-seat parliament. The figure, which was closest to that, was 16.1% secured by the far-right Conservative People's Party, also known as Estonia's EKRE Party. However, in order to stay in power, Kalis's party will again have to form a coalition with one or more parties. And if she succeeds in crafting a functioning coalition, then it would cement the Baltic nation's pro-European direction. After the results were announced, Kalis said that her party is now in a strong position to form a coalition government that would keep up calling for pressure on Russia. She also mentioned about other plans that will be pursued by her government. We have to uh, uh, do uh, major reforms regarding uh, green transition, for example, but we also have to invest our, in our security. Our aggressive neighbor has not uh, vanished and will not vanish, so we have to work with that. And also we have issues like uh, regional uh, cohesion, but also uh, education system that is the best in the world, but uh, there is uh, still, we need the Estonian language education, so that is also a big reform. However, challenges are not over for the Prime Minister. The chairperson of EKRE said that the party does not recognize the results and he plans to challenge the election results in court. My first reaction is that I don't uh, believe and I don't trust uh, the um, electronic voting and I don't think it's, uh, it reflects the actual will of the uh, voters. You see, the scepticism around the electronic voting system is not new in the Baltic nation. Since 2005, Estonians can cast their votes online from anywhere in the world, in both local and parliamentary elections. This provoked a lot of political discussions about potential cyber security issues. Despite the backlash, online voting process gained popularity in the country. According to reports in 2019, around 43.8% of all voters in Estonia's parliamentary elections casted their votes online, and 46.7% of voters in the European Parliament elections. Now for more on this, we are being joined by James Jackson, who is a journalist and political commentator from Berlin. Welcome to the broadcast, James. I want to get straight to the point. In order to stay in power, Kaya Kalas will need a coalition again. How optimistic do you think you are about this and how will it shape Tallinn's stance over the war in Ukraine? I don't think there's going to be any change in Tallinn's stance and I think that's because the voters have delivered what the Financial Times is calling a landslide victory for Kalas. Now, she's been in coalition before. In, in small countries like Estonia, it's very common that you have to have a three-party coalition to stay in government. Now, she's ruled out a coalition with the far-right Ekre party, um, who are, as you've, as you've mentioned, are questioning the votes, in particular the electronic votes. So she's previously led a coalition of two parties, two other parties from the Liberal Centre, and successfully governed um, Estonia, has been one of the leading voices in standing up for Ukraine and standing against Russia within Europe. And it looks like the Estonian people have just backed her again to do that. So it's actually, looking at their electoral arithmetic, it's almost impossible for Estonia to have a government which doesn't have her reform party at the head. Now, it's also worth pointing out that this is the biggest victory in Estonian history. So she's won more votes than anyone in the past. She's, of course, from a traditionally ruling party, but she has beaten all previous records. So this is despite the fact that Estonia has put an entire 1% of GDP into supporting Ukraine, which is a huge amount, and the fact <clears throat> that the country is suffering some of the worst inflation in the world with 19%. So a, a lot, some of the worst in Europe, at least. Now, 
in such a difficult situation, you might expect voters to get cold feet, to, to question why, why they're spending so much money on a fight that they might not see as theirs, why they're suffering so much from the rising cost of living. But what they've done is, with their history, Estonia, of course, was part of the Soviet Union for a very long time. All right. uh, and before that, the Russian Empire, they've backed Kalas and they've backed her coalition partners as well. So the mental, so the political arithmetic is on her side. She's going to stay Absolutely. in government. All right, James, let's digress from the politics a little bit. Estonia is one of the most digitally advanced societies in the world. In 2019, about 43.8% of the people voted online. But there are apprehensions uh, emerging now, especially from the opposition. So what is your take on this? So the preliminary figures I've seen actually show that this is the first election, 51%, where the majority of people voted online. So this is actually a record. It's not just for the small nation of, of uh, Estonia, 1.4 million people, but I would say worldwide this is um, a big deal because 51%, according to preliminary figures, the majority have voted online. Now, they have quite a sophisticated method of doing it. I don't think we need to listen to ECRE too much here. They lost seats and they are trying to find excuses, it, it looks like to most analysts. So in Estonia, right. everyone has a gun ID card and you use that to vote and they have a way of encrypting that. The system is called MixNet. It's quite sophisticated and I think voters do trust in it. So there's no reason to listen to pe people who've lost the election trying to make excuses because they did do badly in online voting, partially because young voters prefer online voting and they don't like ECRE. All right, now Estonia is also emerging as a global tech giant. What are your expectations from the country's future tech policies? And I want to ask you, do you think this could play a role in the war in Ukraine or the future conflicts to come? Well, I, I don't know if it's fair to call it a tech giant because Estonia is a very small country, but you could say it's a David against the Goliath uh, in the tech world. So is it going to play a role in the war against Ukraine? I think having security and a further investment in security is more important than in cyber security. As we've seen um, previous to the war, everyone said that Russia had excellent hackers, that they could be defeat countries um, simply through cyber security attacks. But what we've seen is through the war, what really matters is conventional forces. And Estonia has been supportive of Ukraine through that. So I'm, I'm going to say that it's good for the Estonian business. It's good for um, the startups. It's good for tech policy. But in terms of the war on Ukraine, what matters there is conventional forces. All right. Thank you for all those insights, James. It was a pleasure speaking to you.